I'm Sarah at the Guelph Turfgrass Institute, and let's talk turf. Today I'm going to read an abstract from research that was conducted here at the GTI in 2019 by Corey Flood. The title of this thesis research is Preventing Loss of Winter Hardiness in Turfgrass on Golf Greens and Fairways in the Late Winter. Okay, let's break that down. Preventing Loss of Winter Hardiness. So plants go through this process called acclimation. In the fall, they begin to get ready for winter temperatures. And when they've acclimated to the lower temperatures, things change inside the plant. So water moves to different areas, um, different proteins get formed, certain things get broken down. Imagine like how the maple trees pull all the water down into the roots. That's why we have maple syrup running in, this, in the spring. It has to, the water and the sugars have to go back up. So all plants do some sort of preparation for winter. And then that makes them hardy, hardy. They, they obtain winter hardiness. So in this research, we're trying to prevent the loss of winter hardiness because um, with temperature fluctuations, predicted climate change, um, if a plant undergoes acclimation and gets ready for the winter, and then all of a sudden there's a quick blast of warm air, you can lose your winter hardiness. The plants will say, oh, it's spring again, I'm gonna get ready for spring, and then they lose all of this preparation work that they did to get ready for winter. Uh, so we're looking at turf grass on golf greens and fairways. So greens are where around the hole is and uh, fairways is sort of the in-between. You can chip off of it. Um, the fairways are a little bit longer, but not like lawn length. Um, and we're looking at it in specifically late winter. This research was conducted in Southern Ontario. So just kind of put that in your mind's eye. Okay, so let's read the abstract and then I'm gonna try to break it down. Plant growth regulators, PGRs, such as gibberellic acid, GA3, abscisic acid, ABA, and trinexapac ethyl, TE, can be applied to turf grasses to promote winter hardiness. Lethal temperature of 50% mortality measurements revealed that application of these PGRs had no effect on the acclimation status of creeping bentgrass and annual bluegrass for the months of January, February, and March. Fall PGR application decreased acclimation status for annual bluegrass, whereas ABA and GA3 applications increased acclimation status for creeping bentgrass in April. Treatment with exogenous ABA increased endogenous ABA levels in annual bluegrass. A simulated warming event in a growth chamber in late winter resulted in a loss of acclimation status for both grasses compared to a control. GA3 increased annual bluegrass photosynthesis and TE decreased creeping bentgrass photosynthesis and TE decreased creeping bentgrass photosynthesis during the warming event. PGRs are beneficial for maintaining the acclimation status of creeping bentgrass while reducing the acclimation status of annual bluegrass. Okay, let's break that down. Plant growth regulators or PGRs. So a plant growth regulator is anything that can change how a plant grows. So it might be increasing growth or decreasing growth. It could be changing the number of flowers that are produced. It, there's lots of things that plant growth regulators can do. So we're looking at three specific molecules. One is called gibberellic acid, the GA3. And you know, I'm not actually sure where the number three comes from. It's because there's multiple different structures of GA and this is just the third one. Really creative. So gibberellic acid and gibberellic acid uh, or gibberellins are plant hormones. So in the same way that humans have hormones, a hormone is a chemical signaler. So it's, it's like the messenger of the body. It takes information from one area and tells other parts of the plant to do something. So um, this hormone it is a plant growth regulator and it can st uh, stimulate or increase plant cell division. So that means that it's going to create more cells 
and it also uh, increases plant cell elongation. So you're not only are you going to have more cells, you're going to have longer cells or larger cells. So that makes the plant grow differently. Um, it's specifically used, so gibberellic acid, GA3, specifically for leaves and stems. It's commonly used in the plant world. The next one, abscisic acid, also called ABA, is another signaling molecule that is actually on in all kingdoms of life, like not just plants. This is not just plants. Every organism has this. And its role is um, in plants, it can improve resistance to abiotic stress. And when I'm saying abiotic, that means non-living. So any kind of stress caused by non-living factors like drought, heat, that kind of thing. So um, this is a product that allows the plants to be more resistant to those types of stresses. Okay, and the other one, trinexapac ethyl, <laughs> it's most often uses, used on grasses specifically. It's, uh, it's a foliar spray that can then be moved into the growing shoot. So in grasses, the growing shoot occurs right at the base of the plant, right the, at the roots, where the roots meet the air, essentially. That's the growing point. So TE, um, it inhibits or prevents the action of certain enzymes. So it actually prevents the formation of gibberellic acid so we talked about gibberellic acid previously. So it prevents the formation of gibberellins, which promotes cell elongation. So it's basically stopping cell elongation. It slows growth down. Okay, so that's the first sentence. <laughs> so these three products are often applied to turf grasses to promote winter hardiness. And winter hardiness is that ability to um, slow down the metabolism, prepare for winter, survive under a layer of snow. Then lethal temperature of 50% mortality measurements. Basically, the temperature that will kill 50% of the population. So when we're talking about grasses, we drop the temperature lower and lower until we killed half of the, half of the plants. Um, it revealed that applying these products had no effect on acclimation. So acclimation um, is that process of getting ready for winter. Applying these PGRs did not prevent acclimation. That's good because if you apply a plant growth regulator and the plants keep growing because you've applied this product, if a plant is growing, it's not getting ready for winter. Okay, so that's good news. So it meant that um, they looked at it in January, February, and March, and they found that the plants were successfully acclimated when they had applied these PGRs. When they measured the lethal temperature, the LT50, um, in January, February, and March, there was no effect of PGRs. But when you apply the PGRs in the fall, they can decrease the acclimation status for annual bluegrass. Um, so that means if you apply these PGRs in the fall, they actually harm the acclimation status for annual bluegrass, which is Poa annua, that's the species. Whereas if you apply ABA or GA3, it actually improves the acclimation for the other species that he tested, creeping bent grass. So that was interesting that the plant growth regulators act differently for the different species of turf grass. Treatment with exogenous ABA, so exogenous means external, so it was applied to the outside of the plant increased endogenous ABA levels. So if you apply it to the outside of the plant, it's increasing the levels on the inside of the plant. So it means it's not just coated on the outside of the plant and not doing anything, it's actually moving into the plant, which is good. Then they did a simulated warming event. So 
imagine the plants are all at a cool temperature simulating winter and then they pump up the temperature in that growth chamber really quickly. So it was a, a simulated warming event and it resulted in loss of acclimation status for both grasses. So that means the plants saw the warm temperatures and they decided to switch their mechanisms and prepare for spring. So they changed from being ready for winter to let's get ready to grow at springtime. So that's what I'm talking about with like temperature fluctuations. That's a problem with climate change predictions. We're expecting more temperature fluctuations. So if we have an unseasonally warm period in the spring, plants come out of winter hardiness, get ready to grow again, and then you pop snow back on top of them, that can kill them. So they simulated a warming event and the plants that had been treated with GA3 increased photosynthesis, the, the annual bluegrass. They were producing more sugars from sunlight and the TE product decreased photosynthesis for creeping bentgrass. So that's interesting in that the different products had different effects on photosynthesis on the two species during that warming event that simulated uh, temperature spike. So the final sentence summarizes that PGRs are beneficial for maintaining acclimation status of creeping bentgrass, but they actually reduce it for annual bluegrass. So what they're saying here is that these products, PGRs, can help uh, keep creeping bentgrass in the winter hardiness state um, during an unseasonally warm spring, but that temperature fluctuation, but it actually is not good for annual bluegrass. So yes, use these on creeping bentgrass, Agrostis stolonifera, but not really recommended for annual bluegrass, Poa annua. So that's kind of interesting. So I'm going to ask Corey to join me to see if I got my interpretation correct and talk about what he's currently doing these days. Thanks for listening.